and Jesus, I will ponder now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As ones who have often fallen under the pressure of temptation, we bow before holy God. Lord, Lord you, you know, know all things, things even, even the, the sins, sins that, that we fail to realize. realize or recognize. You know our good intentions, how strong our faith is when everything is peaceful. And you, you also know when, when our courageous good intentions buckle and fall to the ground. We cry out to you for rescue. Deliver us from our fallings and our, our failures, failures, our, our sins. sins. Lord Jesus, turn to us, look upon us, not with judgment and condemnation, but with love and compassion. As his servant and by his command, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Set, Set us, us free, free Lord, Lord, and, and raise, raise us, us up, up to new life. life.
let narrative. The Lenten narrative comes from St. Luke, chapter 23, starting with verse 1. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be the Messiah a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priest and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted. He stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, when he le learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign in some sort. He pleaded with him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priest and the teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him, dressing him in an elegant robe. They sent him back to Pilate. That day Herod and Pilate became friends before this they had been enemies.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our text for this evening is from Luke chapter 22. We find it on our screen. I invite you to read with me. The Lord Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Peter. Then Then Peter Peter remembered the word the Lord Lord had spoken to him. him. Before Before the the rooster rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And And Peter Peter went outside and wept wept bitterly. This will serve as our text for this evening. People of God, people whose faith is in Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. I think I jumped about that high, uh, straight up in the air. I was walking down a hallway, and uh, just as I was walking under a fire alarm, it suddenly went off. And if you've ever been in that particular situation, especially one of those old-time, real loud fire alarms, uh, you know what I mean. Talk about a wake-up call. Uh, It sure had a way of not only waking me up, but shaking me up. When you need to remember something, uh, what do you do? You put the alarm on uh, your uh, phone. Uh, Perhaps you put a sticky note on a refrigerator. Uh, If your refrigerator is anything like ours, a sticky note's going to get lost on it. Or perhaps you might uh, uh, tie a string around your finger as far as some way to remember. Now, those things can be helpful. And, of course, there are also the types of things that happen um, that make us remember when uh, we uh, forgot the unintended ways to remember. For example, when the smoke alarm goes off in a house and you suddenly remember uh, you left something in the oven and it's burning. Or perhaps uh, when you're driving down the interstate and all of a sudden the chime in the car begins to ring uh, to remind you that you forgot to get gas in the car uh, yesterday. Or in the case of today's text, when the rooster crows. When the rooster crows. When the rooster crowed, Simon Peter suddenly remembered words that had been spoken just a few hours before. He remembered the words that he spoke that were so bold. He also remembered the words that Jesus spoke that told of what was going to happen that evening. In our Lenten services this uh, during the midweek, we're looking at the way that the scriptures use the word remember. Remember. When the scriptures use the word remember, they're not just saying uh, think about something. They're talking about thinking that leads to an action. Thinking that leads to some kind of action. And so in our text for tonight, the rooster crowed, Simon Peter remembered, and then as he remembered the words of Jesus, Simon Peter then had the power of Jesus' word, repented. He did something. He repented. The theme for tonight is God causes his word to be remembered so that we repent. So that we repent. The evening of that first Monday, Thursday, started off with great intentions for Simon Peter and his fellow disciples. Uh, They were really excited to be with Jesus and share the meal with them. But then when Jesus began talking about his coming arrest and his death, uh, Simon Peter and all of the other disciples boldly stated their loyalty. They boldly proclaimed their loyalty to Jesus, uh, saying that they would stay with him uh, even if it meant dying with him. And then Jesus very point bluntly told the disciples that every one of them is going to run away from him. And he turned to Simon Peter and said, and you're going to deny me three times before the rooster crows in the morning. The disciples, of course, were uh, vehement in uh, their confidence and in their boldness, in their allegiance to Jesus. Uh, They had great faith. But their faith was in themselves. Their faith was in themselves. They had a great faith, but it was misguided, misdirected, 
and misfounded faith. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Now, it wasn't long after such vigorous statements of his faith and loyalty to Jesus that Simon Peter suddenly found him in enemy territory. The night was uh, cold. It was dark. Uh, the fire burning in the pit uh, was surrounded by people who hated Jesus. The shadows in the flickering light were as ominous as the sounds that were floating down from the high priest's house, which was just a few yards away, as the mockery of the trial of Jesus was going on in that house. Simon Peter's boldness had now been replaced with the shadows of fear and anxiety. And under the pressure, Simon Peter's faith cracked, split in two, and broke apart. Earlier in the evening, time after time, he had vigorously uh, stated his faith and confidence, his loyalty. But now he was vigor vigorously denying that he even knew Jesus, much less being associated with him. And then it happened. And then it happened. Within just a moment, all of his fear and his anxiety now was replaced with guilt and grief. The rooster crowed. The rooster crowed. And when Simon Peter looked up, he saw Jesus looking straight at him. He saw Jesus looking straight at him. And Simon Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. It was like a fire alarm going off inside of his head. Simon Peter was stricken to the core with grief to the core of his being. And he rushed out of the compound. He went away weeping bitterly in repentance of what he had done. You see, Simon Peter not only remembered the words of Jesus, he did something about them when he remembered them. He ran, he wept, he repented. Now, we all know what that feeling is like. Uh, at times when we are suddenly confronted with the reality of our sin, and there are times when we're confronted with such, such a vividly a conf confrontation with the reality of our sin that we find ourselves saying, how could I have ever done such a thing? How could I have done something that would hurt someone, so, the, somebody that I love? How could I have done this to someone who loved me so deeply? And when we have those kinds of experiences, the guilt soaks down deeply into the very core of our being. A rooster's crowing, a fire alarm, something that calls us back to the reality, that uh, confronts us with the reality of our sin. We can definitely understand Simon Peter's dilemma. It's one thing for us to boldly state our allegiance to, I believe in God the Father, I believe in God the Son, I believe in God the Holy Spirit while we're here in church. But when we're surrounded by other people who ridicule Christ, who mock those who swear their allegiance to Him, all of a sudden, the boldness is gone. We find the disowning, the denying set in. And like Simon Peter, we wish that we could fade into some kind of shadow. The crowing of a rooster, a fire alarm. In our catechism studies, we find that the law of God, the Ten Commandments, is like a wake-up call. It is a... Uh, it's something that brings us back to reality, and sometimes it can shock us into reality. The Ten Commandments are like a mirror 
And that clearly shows us our sin. And the illustrations that used in our catechism study is when we talk about the uh, Ten Commandments as being a mirror, the mirror of God's law, uh, the illustration is of a person who says, hey, I'm uh, looking good today. And he walks and he looks into the mirror and all of a sudden he sees, oh, that's not nearly as good as I thought. Hair all messed up bleeding from a scratch that I have, maybe a ring of milk around my uh, mouth, you know, all kinds of stuff that I thought was not there suddenly appears. And the problem is the mirror is all too accurate and all too revealing. It doesn't lie. It speaks and it shows the truth too clearly. In the mirror of the law shows our sin. Now on that particular night, when G Simon Peter disowned Jesus three times, he didn't have a mirror that he looked into. Instead, when he looked up, he found himself looking into the face of Jesus. Looking into the face of Jesus. I think I'd rather look into the mirror. When Simon Peter looked into the face of Jesus, what did he see? Was it, I told you so, type of a look? Uh, maybe it would have been the look of, I am so disappointed in you. Or would it have been the look of, uh, how could you do this to me? all the things that I have done for you. What did Simon Peter see when he looked into the face of Jesus? He saw a friend, his best friend. He saw compassion. And seeing that face of his best friend, it didn't take his sin and guilt away. Instead, it intensified the realization of what he had done. And so all that Simon Peter could do was turn and run as quickly as he could, overwhelmed with grief, overwhelmed with guilt, weeping bitterly in repentance. And what's our reaction when we're confronted with a sin that has deeply hurt others? Especially when we turn from our sin, we find ourselves looking into the face of Jesus. What's our reaction? Well, even though the face of Jesus is filled with compassion for us, we are still overwhelmed with grief and guilt. And we may not have tears streaming down from our eyes, but our hearts are flooded with tears of remorse and sorrow and dismay. Tears of sorrow, tears of guilt, tears of repentance. But one thing we must understand, our tears can never wash our sins away. No matter, how, no matter how many tears we have, our tears cannot wash our sins away. No matter how much we grieve or how many tears we shed, they just don't have the power to remove our sin. Not even weeping like St. Peter did bitterly in repentance. Our repentance does not forgive us. Our repentance does not forgive us. What repentance does is it opens the door for us to receive the forgiveness that only God can give. So Simon Peter looked into the face of Jesus. It was a look that confronted him with his sin. That was not the last time that Simon Peter would look into the face of Jesus. It's very probable that he looked into the face of Jesus as the body of Jesus was being taken down from the cross and was being prepared for burial. The face of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And perhaps he saw the face of Jesus when Jesus was being buried, a face that at one time had been so full of life, but now was overshadowed by the power of death. But even that would not have been the last time that Simon would see the face of Jesus. Easter Sunday broke up 
on that morning. And later that day, Simon Peter would again see the face of Jesus. But this time it would be the face of the resurrected one. The one who had conquered death. And what would Jesus say to Simon Peter and the others who had spoken such bold words that were totally empty? His first words to the disciples. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. No guilt, no law, 100% gospel. 100% gospel. And several weeks later, when Simon Peter and several others were having breakfast with Jesus on the Sea of Galilee, three different times, Jesus would tell Peter, ask Peter, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Peter had denied Jesus and disowned him three different times. And three different times Jesus would invite him to come back with him. And to be a part of his powerful ministry. What was it that Simon Peter saw in the face of Jesus? It was not only compassion of a great friend. It was forgiveness. Forgiveness. In his sin and grief, Simon Peter could not lift his eyes to look up at, to Jesus. But Jesus lifted him up so that he would be able to see clearly the forgiveness that his Lord was giving to him. The crowing of a rooster. The crowing of a rooster. I imagine for the rest of his life, every time Simon Peter heard a rooster crow, it probably stopped him in his tracks. It probably made uh, like an alarm that went off in his mind, confronting him with his denial. But it also called him to lift up his eyes to Jesus, to the forgiveness that his friend had given him. So people of God, people whose faith is in Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, God sounds the alarm, and rightfully so. The alarm calls us to clearly face our sin, the dangers of our sin. But God does not want us to remain in our sin, nor does he even want us to continue to be stuck in repentance. That's not where he wants us to be. His desire is that we be lifted up with his forgiveness. Forgiveness which is ours completely and totally in Christ Jesus. Look up, people. Look up. Listen. Receive. Believe. As a called and ordained servant of the word, by the authority of Christ Jesus, our Lord, at the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Forgiven. That's what God gives us. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love and care. Everything I needed today came from you. You are the solid rock under our feet. Our help and glory are only in you. You are a safe place to be. Our strength today came straight from you. All of our accomplishments from today we lay at your feet. They are yours. All our worries and fears from today, we lay at your feet this night. Use them to draw us closer to you. May this night bring us rest, joy, and the peace that passes all understanding. May your spirit remind us of your works in our sleep 
And we pray that our heart praises you all night and brings you glory. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and drive them all. Drive away the snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell with us to preserve us in peace. And let your blessing be upon us always through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank thank you, my my Heavenly Father, Father, through Jesus Jesus Christ, your your dear dear Son, that that you have graciously kept me this day. day. And I I pray pray that that you would would forgive me all my sins where I have have done done wrong. wrong. And and graciously graciously keep me this night. For into into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. all understand will guard, guard your, your hearts, hearts and, and your, your minds, minds.